Hi, you're watching Global Energy Show's 5 by 5 series. I'm Rachel Gregory, and today I'm talking to Sabina Russell, VP Clean Fuels with HTech. Sabina, thanks for being here. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. So, Sabina, tell us a bit about HTech. Who are you and what makes you unique in the industry? HTEC is developing hydrogen infrastructure across the whole value chain. So right from production, liquefaction in some cases, distribution and uh, hydrogen fueling station networks. So I think we're kind of unique in that a lot of companies play in one part of the value chain, but we're working across the entire value chain to really bring hydrogen forward as a low carbon fuel for transportation. Sabina, in your opinion, why is hydrogen required for a carbon neutral economy? If you look at um, Canada's energy system or global energy systems, an enormous amount of our energy today is delivered in the form of liquid fuels or gaseous fuels, as well as electrons. And so when you really look at the challenge of getting to net zero, you don't have a lot of options for how to deliver energy without carbon attached. And so we think hydrogen plays a really important role as a, a clean fuel. And there'll be other fuels like RNG that will also play a role along with direct electrification. And we really think that hydrogen will be important in those hard to abate sectors where really high energy density is needed. So things like heavy duty trucking or heat for industry, steel making, um, that's where we think hydrogen can really shine. It was recently announced that HTEC will be building the largest green hydrogen plant in BC following the company's purchase of ERCO Worldwide's 19 acre industrial waterfront property. So how does this project make a significant step in the hydrogen fuel infrastructure in British Columbia? HTEC has been working for several years now to build out a network of, of retail fueling stations for hydrogen in British Columbia. And our challenge today is we just don't have enough hydrogen to supply our stations to help with that adoption of fuel cell electric vehicles. So we think that establishing at scale production is really critical as a next step in British Columbia. And this site at ERCO is a very unique location in that ERCO has been operating a sodium chlorate facility there for since the 1950s actually, and they vent a large amount of hydrogen, which is a byproduct of the sodium chlorate manufacturing process. So this is a perfect opportunity for us, you know, sort of new industry working together with old industry to say, let's capture that waste, let's clean it up. And we're actually putting a liquefier at that facility. And then we have a low carbon fuel that can be distributed to our, our network of fueling stations. And the great thing is we've already started building out that network of stations and we're poised to expand that in parallel to building out this production facility. In your opinion, Sabina, what is the timeline for scalable public adoption of hydrogen powered vehicles? Yeah, that's a good question. It kind of depends what you mean by scale. I actually drive a fuel cell car myself already, and I've been driving one since 2018. For sure, there's not a lot on the road in BC or in Canada. In California, I'd say we're already seeing, you know, the I think somewhere around 50,000 vehicles worldwide have been released so far, and a lot of those are in California. I would say in Canada and BC, we think by the late later part of this decade and into the early 2030s, we'll see a much larger number of vehicles. It, it is a very challenging period that we're in now because we have to be building out the infrastructure to enable the release of those vehicles. And then we need the vehicles to create demand to justify the economics of building the infrastructure. But we're really starting to break the back of that. And we think that in the next sort of five to eight years, we're gonna see a much bigger scale. Thank you so much, Sabina, for chatting to us today about HTEC and of course being part of our 5x5 series. Great, thanks so much for having me. Thank you for watching Global Energy Show's 5x5 series. Be sure to like this video, share it out to your networks, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can stay on top of all of our latest interviews. We will see you next time.